the the process that I've worked with a lot of companies on that seems to work well is uh, design thinking. So what I tell them is let's always start with understanding our customers and then ideas will jump off from that. So let's have brainstorming sessions where we look at customer interview information. Let's have brainstorming sessions where we look at customer data and their trends. And let's see what kind of conversations come up around that and ideas that come around that. Great. Now you're getting people looking at it from a customer point of view instead of from an internal product point of view. Hey, I think it would be cool if we created that. Mm -hmm. Maybe. What do our customers want? What do our customers think? So let's start there. Let's start with empathizing with our customers and then let's ideate. So let's get a bunch of people together and brainstorm different ideas. Whether their individual idea or not gets chosen, the fact that they were involved, the fact that they participated, the fact that they got to be a part of the process where we did whittle down which ideas make more sense, they're going to have buy-in now. I'm not a big proponent of the suggestion box because it's anonymous. They put something in and then they don't know what happens. It's like a black box. Let's make this a, a participatory exercise mm -hmm. where people get to see what goes on behind the curtain and are a part of it. Um, and then how do you test those ideas? How do you pilot those things? And how do you really have a, 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 a entrepreneurial mindset with these new concepts that we've come up with? Um, and then tweak and then, okay, this looks like it's working. How do we now full fledged build this out and get it to market? So that's more of the approach I would, I would help companies put in place. Um, and employees love that it's fun. It's exciting. And they're part of it. So you get their buy-in at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you said there. Cause like indirectly, there's also the thought process of when you give people a, a, like a, a set system, something to go with, then you'll get the results that you want. But if you go, hey, just give me ideas and innovate, well, yeah. now you're setting yourself for a failure because you didn't give it any rules or structure and people yeah. will just go, well, I'll just give you anything and then yeah. complain that it doesn't work, right? It's funny. I actually learned this the hard way. Um, <laughs> earlier in my in my career, when I was a software developer, I had a, a, a boss who met really well, but he said, guys, we're going to do some uh, brainstorming. Uh, everybody come on into the, the boardroom. Um, and it was just... Basically, here's a problem. Okay, popcorn moment. Everybody just start giving your ideas in silence. Like that's <laughs> not how innovation works. You don't just sit everybody down and say, give me an idea. There's a process that has to come from that, right? So usually it's empathizing with the customer first, really discussing that. Um, then you have to formulate, well, where do ideas come from? And how do you pull them out of people? Just saying, give me your ideas really just puts people on the spot. You haven't trained their brain to get into that innovative mindset yet. So this mm -hmm. is what I help a lot of companies do is, well, how do you do that? How do you spark innovation? And how do you run a good brainstorming session? Mm -hmm. So because I've been on the, the side of a bad brainstorming session, it really <laughs> got me thinking, well, what does a good one look like? Right. And that's where that kind of led me down that road of how do you do this uh, in a way that's going to make employees love working there and love your brainstorming sessions? Mm -hmm. No, for somebody who people goes to, to come up with ideas, to run these sessions or to set these sessions up, how do you find new ideas? How do you keep your mind uh, open and, uh, and have that perception of coming up with different innovative yeah. ideas and or being able to drive a session so that it sparks yeah. ideas and suggestions? Our, our brains are funny things. Um, they're lazy. <laughs> Our brains want to find the comfortable way of doing it, the way we've done it before, find the shortest way to get to here, and then that's our comfort zone. But that's not where innovation or new ideas happen. In order to have great new creative ideas, you need to force your brain outside of your comfort zone. So for me, what that looks like is I'm constantly reading books I wouldn't normally read. I love a good John Grisham novel and I've probably read 20 of them, but I know what I'm getting mm -hmm. and it doesn't spark new ideas. So yes, I read them for leisure, but then I'll also go to the library and pick out a book I never even thought of reading before. Yeah. Ah, new information, new ideas outside my comfort zone. Synapses in my brain are now going off that <laughs> never would have before. Um, but you can take that concept and apply it to any part of your life. Think of all the comfort zones we have 
if you drive to work, you probably take the same route every day. Mm -hmm. Take a different route. When you get to work, you probably like to park in the exact same parking spot. That's your comfort zone. The first day you arrived at work, you just randomly chose a parking spot. But then every day since then, you've kind of associated, that's my spot. Yeah, That's the way our brains work. So recognize all these comfort zones you have and intentionally try and break them. Now, if you can start to create that habit, you're going to create a lot more innovation ideas in your in your head. So then I work with companies to say, what does that look like for you guys? What comfort zones do you guys have as a team, as a company? What are some things that you do all the time? Maybe every meeting looks like this. Let's intentionally have a meeting where we switch up the agenda, mm -hmm. where we do it differently, where we look at it from a different way, or we don't even include that part anymore. We're going to do and it just forces them outside their comfort zone. Do you mm -hmm. guys always meet in this boardroom? Let's have an outdoor meeting today, right? Just different ways to get, now you're preparing their brain, mm -hmm. synapses are going off. And then when you start getting into the brainstorming part, their brain is ready. It's been trained for ah new ideas, new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some examples of things that I would do with companies to get them into that innovation mindset.